Okay, welcome. Uh, I hope your screen looks like mine does. On the left, you see a console, and on the right, you see an environment tab. To start, we're gonna type individual commands into the command prompt, which is this little right-hand caret here. And the easiest commands to understand are ones that you might type into a calculator. So RStudio will let you add and multiply and subtract and divide. And you see that the answers are all what you might expect. Another thing you can do is you can save the results of calculations inside a variable. So for example, I could say x equals 1 third. And here in the environment tab, you see I've got a new variable, x, whose value is a decimal approximation of a third. A different way of doing the same thing is using what's called the assignment operator, which looks like a little left-hand arrow. It's the less than sign and then a dash. Um, and this, as I said, it does the same thing. This also evaluates what value the right-hand side is equal to and saves the results into the left-hand side. That assignment operator is a lot more common in R, um, although you will see equals sometimes. A quick note about equals is in math, x equals 3 is the same thing as saying 3 equals x. Uh, the equal sign in math means both sides have the same value. In programming, an equal sign <coughs> excuse me, is more like an assignment operator. So an equal sign means figure out whatever the value on the right is and save it inside a variable on the left. So if I was gonna try and type three equals x, you'll see that that's an error because the left-hand side is not a variable as it needs to be. So once you have some variables defined, you can use them the same way that you would in uh, any math expression. So I could do x times x plus one, and you see that because x is equal to three, that gives me three times three is nine, plus one is 10. Um, let's say I was gonna do this. Let's say I'm gonna define a new variable b that's going to be equal to a times a plus one. Here you see that b, b's value is 144, which is a squared plus one is 145. If I do this, a equals a plus one or assign a to b a plus one, the way to understand this is it takes the current value of a, adds one to it and saves that result back inside the a variable. So you'll see a has just gone up by one, but notice that the value of b didn't change. So when I defined b as being equal to a squared plus one, I'm not forever linking the value of b to the value of a. All I did was I looked at the current value of a when I ran that particular command and I assigned a number to b. But after that, if I change the value of a, the value of b doesn't update all by itself. Instead, I'd need to rerun that same command in order to update it. So in math, you usually name your variables with a single letter, like a or b or x or p or n. Um, in programming, it's more normal to name your variables with an entire word that describes what's inside your variable. So if you had a temperature, you might name it temp, so like 98.6. Um, and you can still use that like a variable. So I could say temp times temp would be temp squared plus one. Um, and you'll see that that still works. Um, but you have so many numbers that it's too hard to remember what each number is if you're just storing them in variables that are a single letter. An important thing to know about variables though is they do have to be a single word. So I can't, I can't create a variable called num cats. You'll see that that's an error. Two solutions to this problem are you could do num underscore cats, that works okay, or you could say num cats with a capital C and no space. So those are both okay ways to name your variables. Just remember it's gotta be one word um, and it can't start with a number or punctuation. 